ICP and internet computer have been getting a lot of talk lately. They're all over YouTube. I've seen a lot of influencers and a lot of people saying that ICP is the token you should be investing in currently in this bear market. Now, yes, ICP has done a great run up in price, but there are three big, big concerns that I have for ICP that you need to know if you're considering investing into it. Do I think that ICP will go up in price? Yes. Do I think that they have an amazing user interface that's very seamless and works very quickly? Yes, I do. I do think people will make money on ICP, but I still think these three things warrant your knowledge and your understanding before making an investment or before going all in as I've seen many people say about ICP. Now the first big concern that I have with ICP is its fundamental idea of decentralizing the internet. The internet is already decentralized and you could probably argue that the internet would be more decentralized currently as a free open public thing than if ICP and Definity were arguably creating the new internet. It, it would require so much work to decentralize ICP and Affinity's um, new internet than the current internet we have. It would take every country adopting ICP and every person adopting ICP as well, which to me does not seem like it's fundamentally going to happen. We already have enough trouble um, getting people to reject cookies and store their privacy and use RFID and use hardware wallets. How are we going to get people to adopt the decentralized internet understand what that is and move to use that over the current way. The current internet is not more or less centralized than something like ICP would be. The current centralized system of the internet is only centralized because of who we give our data to. Yes, you could say that certain countries and certain regions have restrictions on the internet. Some different countries over in the east will not let people on the internet or they won't let people explore certain topics on the internet, but that's not going to change with ICP's decentralized internet. Those people will still have trouble accessing the internet and they will still have trouble accessing things that are going to be restricted in their area, right? Like if a certain country doesn't let people get on the internet, they're not going to let people get on ICP. And if you don't have an internet, like a, a way to reach the internet currently, you won't have a way to reach ICP as it's fundamentally sort of the same thing. Major companies like Google, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft currently control the majority of you know how the majority of us use the internet they control our data they control the access points but we do that by choice they make the best products and therefore we choose to use those product which inherently centralizes the access points and the total usage on average of who's using the internet the majority of us are using the internet on apple on microsoft on google you know on spotify on these places and that is centralizing our data and our usage of what we use the internet for but you especially if you live in America or Europe, have the ability to access the internet in your own free decentralized way currently. Now, I don't think ICP would make this system better than it currently is, as if we go through the ICP decentralization process, Definity and ICP will still be at the backbone of the access points for the internet, much like a Google or a Microsoft or you know a, a Netflix. Trust me, I understand how ICP wants to attempt to decentralize by putting out more nodes, having more access points, more relay points, canister nodes, and you know, letting people host things without the ability of something like a WordPress or a Wix taking their website away or YouTube delisting a channel, right? I get how ICP is trying to decentralize, but at the core of all that, you have 119 nodes that ICP and Affinity or the people have voted for. And it just kind of seems like more of the same that we have with Google. All of this is piled on top of a massive amount of risk and speculation. In my opinion, investing in ICP is investing in something like Amazon at year one, maybe even day one, something crazy like that. The idea of decentralizing the internet that's already decentralized but in a web3 version is one so far out there we're not even close to being there in crypto we haven't got crypto games crypto internet crypto ai like all these things are so far out there in my opinion i do think that eventually we can get there and again i like the user interface that icp has and all the ideas it has but this is such a risky risky endeavor you would be crazy to go all in on it in my opinion. The second biggest concern that I have for ICP is that it is centralized and there are not a lot of nodes. And I know that nodes have been coming more and more as I've been watching. I was watching at about 70 nodes. Right now we're at 119 nodes. But ICP at its core is a centralized company like an Amazon, like a Google, like a Facebook that is trying to make money. Definity is a company that wants to make money. All the venture capitalists are running all the nodes. If you look at the node providers, it's a lot of these big entities, venture capitalists and big corporations that are going to want to make money. And they're running these nodes to keep up with inflation. So they're probably going to do very well on ICP. But you and me who do not run nodes are not going to get the same type of outcome. Second, 
you know, I know how the NNS system works and you got to vote nodes and you got to do all this. Anyone in a decentralized economy should be able to spin up a node, should be able to contribute and be able to help. That's not currently the case with ICP. I see this as venture capitalists and Definity and ICP got all the tokens first, right? One or two percent, or even now today, I think 30% might be in the public's hands, but voting power controls who or what goes into the NNS, which then goes to who run nodes. I don't see how that's not a situation where Definity and ICP and venture capitalists vote to bring in nodes that then make money, right, and, you know, are doing the inflation and burning stuff, and they are not benefiting from it, right? If you and I cannot vote ourselves and get the hardware and meet the requirements, how is that fair in a decentralized economy? At that core level, I don't see how ICP is decentralized, and I think that centralization is a big aspect to realize what you're investing in. I don't think centralization or decentralization is better or worse than each other. I just don't want you to think that ICP is decentralized at the core because I do not believe it is. The third big concern I have with ICP is its tokenomics and token inflation. Now, yes, the token has a lot of utility you can use on ICP, paying for your computational storage, devs can pay and like kind of fill up their storage and their computational power that they're going to use you can buy nfts you can buy other tokens you can do swaps all the things that you want to do on a blockchain icp has which is very very good i have a problem with the initial tokenomics and with the current token uh inflation and burning mechanism so i think that the inflation and burning mechanisms are good but right now we're out of balance icp has a lot of reasons to mint tokens and not as many reasons to burn tokens burning happens when computational power is used essentially and you could expect in a bear market less of the blockchain is going to be used. It makes fundamental sense and it happens every bear market on every blockchain. Now, minting of tokens is always going to happen and that's where we run into the problem of more tokens being brought into circulation. Minting happens when staking uh, stakers get their staking rewards and when nodes get their node rewards. So you can see how that always happens and currently is causing ISP to be an inflationary in tokenomics. Now, if you're not staking, and you're not a node provider, you gotta find a way to keep up with those staking rewards and keep up with that token inflation if you're in it for the long term. Lastly, with the tokenomics, I just wanna say that at the beginning, ICP, not a lot was given to the public. A very couple percent was given to the public. That's always a red flag for me, and it does not scream decentralization. The majority of tokens were given to ICP, uh, Definity, and to the venture capitalists or private Ca uh, private capital investors. So I think now that's shifted to about 30% in the hands of the public, 30% in the hands of the private investors, and 30% in the hands of ICP slash Definity type of foundations. But you can see how the tokenomics are not really what I would like to see in, an, in a decentralized economy like a Bitcoin or a Cardano or an Ergo, where the public has a huge portion and less is given to the founders. I think ICP is developing a lot of really awesome ways to work in the blockchain and kind of bring a new iteration of what third generation blockchains can be. I think that they're doing great things with canister nodes and making Web3 like actually usable UI version of Web3. What I think is very hard to comprehend is some of the other things we talked about in this video, and I just wanna raise them as an opinion towards the investors that are going all in or towards people who might be considering investing it, just because I've seen a lot of videos on it. I do think that you can make money in ICP. If you start investing or you start investing at like $6 and now it's at like 12, you would have doubled your money. I still think things like this will happen. And I think ICP will probably run up in price. The question you have to ask yourself is all of the risk and all of the different things that can happen in kind of this type of a blockchain are they worth it when you can get the same kind of returns in something like an Ethereum or a Bitcoin or a Cardano? Now, you probably won't get the same type of returns in something like a Bitcoin or an Ethereum, but there are other decentralized economies like Cardano that give you more control, give the public more control. It's non-custodial staking. So you have other options of things to invest in. I think it's a very good thought experiment to kind of understand, well, what are the risks and pros and cons of investing in ICP? For me, I would only be able to invest in something like ICP for a very short time. I don't think it's something that I can invest in and just let it sit around for the rest of the bear market or the, you know, two years for the next bull market top or whatever the long-term horizon is. I don't think I could realistically buy it and let it sit unless it was a very, very, very small amount of money that was super insignificant to me. Other than that, that's my ICP video. Three big concerns I have that maybe you might have. Please let me know if you agree with some of the opinions I have in this video. Let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to look into some things further. Other than that, I hope you have a great week and we will see you in the next one.